Almita Inventory Distributor, AID. How to import data. In this video, we will import the following data files item master list, customer list, and sales orders. To prepare data for import, create a spreadsheet in Excel, OpenDoc, or any other spreadsheet software. The maximum number of data columns is 30. The spreadsheet can contain more than 30 columns, but all columns to the right of that number will be ignored. Importing the item master list. Let us start with the item master or inventory catalog. We can import any number of columns. All columns are optional except for the item ID. We must have the item ID column in our spreadsheet. In our sample spreadsheet, we have placed the item ID in the first column. We also have about 2,900 rows of data. For easier data mapping, we have placed column names in the first row. In the AID, we go to the Configuration Import menu. The Data Import screen appears. In order to import a file, we need to go through five easy steps. At the top of the screen, each step is represented by a button or a field, and numbered. Step 1. We start with the Load Data File button. Browse our computer or the network, find the data file, and double-click it to open. All data from the file gets loaded into the screen. Please note that the data is not imported yet and exists only on screen until the screen is closed. Closing the screen deletes all data from it without a warning. Step 2. We select an import type from the Select Import Type list. Let us select the item master value for importing our catalog. Step 3. We map our data. By default, the columns are not mapped. For each data column, we select an appropriate database field in the top row. We continue mapping our data until all necessary columns are mapped. If there are more columns than fit on screen, scroll the screen to the right using the horizontal scroll bar at the screen bottom. Step 4. We specify the first data row ID. If in our spreadsheet data starts with row 2, then the row ID will be 2 as well. Before we go on with the fifth and last step, which does the actual import, let us save the current data mapping. This could be helpful in case we need to import this data again. Let us click the Save the Import Map button, select the folder, and specify a file name. Step 5. Let us click the Save Imported Data button. If we mapped all mandatory columns correctly, the data will be imported and the screen cleaned of imported records. If any problem is encountered with the data, an error message will be displayed explaining the problem. You can fix the problem right on the screen or change your data file and use the Load Data File button to reload it. Let us switch to the Item Master screen and browse it to see the imported data. Importing the Customer List In this example, we will import the customer list. 
However, the same procedure can be used for a supplier list or any other static data. Step one, we start with the load data file button, browse our computer or the network, find the data file and double click it to open. Step two, we select an import type from the select import type list. Let us select the customer's value for importing our client list. Step three, we map our data. Although only company name is a mandatory field in this type of import, we recommend providing a customer ID as well. For a consumer list, we can use the person's phone number for the ID and the person's name for the company name. For a company list, we can use a company name abbreviation for the ID. For the addresses, we can import as many street lines as we need by mapping each line as the address. If we have a city, state, or province, and a postal code, each in a separate column, we should map them as city, state or province, and zip or postal code correspondently. Our import function will combine all columns in one address field. Step 4. We specify the first data row ID. Let us also save our mapping for future use in a file. We can use this file later to import additional customers by clicking the Load the Import Map button. Step 5. Finally, let us click the Save Imported Data button. If we mapped all mandatory columns correctly, the data will be imported. Let us switch to the customer's screen and browse it to see the imported data. Importing sales orders. In this example, we will import new sales orders. However, the same procedure can be used for purchase orders and invoices. The orders and invoices are considered dynamic data because this type of import can be used on a daily basis. For instance, we can import today's sales order from our shopping cart website. Step 1. We start with the Load Data File button, browse our computer or the network, find the data file, and double-click it to open. Step 2. We select an import type from the Select Import Type list. Let us select the sales order value. Step 3. We map our data. The columns item ID, quantity ordered, unit price, and order amount are mandatory. We also have a choice of providing customer built to, ship to IDs, or built to and ship to addresses. The addresses can contain any number of street lines, and in addition, city, state, or province, or zip or postal code information. Step 4. We specify the first data row ID. Step 5. Finally, let us click the Save Imported Data button. If we mapped all mandatory columns correctly, the data will be imported. Let us switch to the Sales Orders screen and browse it to see the imported data. Using the above techniques, we can transfer our data from almost any other software.
We can also use it to transfer our sales orders from a website or, for instance, purchase orders from our company's legacy system.